Welcome to Let's Play Battlefield 1942. On today's episode, the Battle of Stalingrad. This is by far the most popular map on the uh, Battlefield 1942 original game. Probably because it's an urban environment, it's closed in, and there's a lot of action, so there's always a lot of kills, people racking up a lot of points. It's probably the shortest distance from the spawn point to the line of action for any map because it's just so small. Also, it's very infantry focused. There's only two tanks on each side. You can't get additional tanks by capturing control points. And the middle flag is somewhat famous for being such a death trap. There's just constantly people throwing grenades in there. You're just as likely to get killed by someone on your own team trying to capture that flag as you are getting killed by someone on the other team. These train tracks here are kind of a weird obstacle. If you try to drive a jeep over the tracks really fast, the jeep's liable to just explode. It's one of those weird things about uh, how the game handles falling distance and taking damage on uh, obstacles that you drive over. Tanks have a really tough time getting over the tracks too. You can pass over the tracks if you go slowly enough. And I've just been team switched already, so that's not a very auspicious sign for this round. But I actually like being on the German side for this map because, of course, there's so much infantry action that your primary infantry weapon becomes critical. And the German medic machine gun is more accurate than the Russian medic machine gun. The Russians have a different assault machine gun that gets used a lot on this map. Uh, it got nerfed, though, after the first couple patches. It used to have something like 80 bullets per clip, and it was really accurate, but they changed that. So I would still go along with the medic machine gun if you're going to play on Stalingrad. This is a typical configuration right here. The Germans have the northern point, Russians have the southern point, and the middle flag is held by no one, at least not until I capture it here. The middle flag on this map actually remains neutral very, very frequently for a long period of time just because there's so much team killing, so many grenades flying in there that it's very difficult to hold it for 10 consecutive seconds. But of course, if you do hold the middle flag, odds are very strong that you're going to win. At least you're going to inflict ticket bleed on the other side. really get a sense of how important it is to be able to recognize the various uniforms of the soldiers. There's so much close-up action that you can't rely as much on the name tags. If you see a bunch of people all close together and a couple name tags, you just don't know who's who. So you gotta shoot for the people who look like they're in the enemy. Each of the building control points, the northern and southern ones, have a ladder that leads to the back window. And those two buildings, I believe, are identical. Uh, just another example of the symmetry that they really like to use when designing the maps on this game. The Russians still haven't been able to recapture or even neutralize the center point, so they're really hurting on the ticket bleed here. If you do manage to get the center flag and both of the other flags, odds are pretty good that the enemy will somehow manage to sneak around back and capture the control point nearer to your main base. I don't know if they'll be able to do it here, but I guess we'll see. Now the Russian main base is different from the German main base because the Russian main base is in this little bowl-shaped valley, and uh, it really sucks to be pinned in there because the Germans can do a really good job of uh, trapping you and making it difficult for you to sneak out. when you 
attempt to climb up any of those ladders. On this map, probably more than any other one, you've got to stay constantly moving. There aren't that many people who spawn in as a sniper because the fog uh, limits your view distance so much. But uh, just staying moving, you can really take advantage of that lag and force people to account for the latency to the server. Make them leave their target. If you stand still, you're just giving them an easy kill. I haven't seen the Russians make very effective use of their tanks so far. I think that's probably been one of their main downfalls. seem to be having trouble just getting their tanks out of their main base. When you do get a tank into the main area of action, it's uh, a little bit tricky. People often do spawn in as an engineer or an anti-tank and go after the tanks, but more than that, because it's so closed in, such narrow alleyways to drive around in, and with all those train tracks, you can't move around very easily with your tank. So you can be a sitting duck. The other thing is people like to grenade spam. So you're likely to get hit with lots and lots of grenades. This whole area over here is part of the enemy main base, technically, because they can spawn in that area. It's a fairly large main. Uh, you usually don't see it too much because there's so much action in the middle of the map, but the Russians are just having a terrible time. Now, I'm sitting next to an ammo crate and just tossing the grenades like crazy. This shows that it is possible to take down a tank just with grenades, especially if you've got an ammo crate. There are no uh, supply troops with ammo supplies, as in Battlefield 2, so that's your only opportunity to do grenade spamming. I believe they may have actually had more ammo crates on this map, but uh, it was either removed in patches or done server-side because people were so sick of all the grenade spamming, it just got to be too much. In fact, I've actually played on some versions of this map where you can only refill your machine gun ammunition with the ammo crate, not your grenades. This round has been a little bit unusual in that the Russians have had such a difficult time maintaining even control over one flag. Ordinarily it's, you know, one red, one blue, one gray. Or uh, at the very least the Russians will get one flag. The Russian main base is pretty intricate and neat looking, but uh, you don't normally see it like this. It just happens that the Russians have been doing such a bad job that they've been pushed back. Looks like the Russians are just about out of tickets, and that'll do it for the Battle of Stalingrad. It's always a short round because there's so much killing going on, knocking down the tickets. So I'll see you on the next episode.